With all these tools that we've just acquired to solve equations, there is uh, you know, certain restrictions, certain limitations that we have. Now in mathematics, limitations or what we can't do is referred to as restrictions. Okay? So what we're going to do is take a look at the restriction that we, one of the main restriction actually, that we have in solving equations. And it's really related, and it's, you know, it is related to the real number set if you remember, for, you know, one of the first videos that we ever did was talking about the real number set and the boundary between natural numbers and whole numbers. And that boundary is basically us introducing the number zero in our vocabulary uh, for the language of mathematics, right? You know, initially we had the natural numbers, which is one, two, three, all the way up to infinity. And then, you know, we were able to define the number zero. And for this new discovery, we created a new subset, the whole number set, which included the natural numbers and, in addition, included zero, right? And when we're solving equations, this zero comes up. This zero comes up basically throughout mathematics. It's, it's something that we haven't been able to deal with completely. So, you know, it's going to create problems in a lot of things that we do. What we have to do is understand what those problems are, what those limitations are, what those restrictions are, right? And, you know, that way we can understand how far we can go with things, right? You know, what we're capable of doing. The problem when it comes to zero, as far as we know, as far as we're concerned, you know, as, you know, you can't divide by the number zero, right? Because when you divide by the number zero, our equations explode. Basically, you get infinity. You, you know, we get an unknown, okay? So what we have to do when we're solving equations is make note of where we have restrictions, where we have limitations. We have to know our limitations when we're solving equations, okay? And in mathematics, a lot of courses initially, when you're solving equations, they're going to ask you to give the restrictions to your solution. Okay. So, for example, let's say we have something like, uh, I'm going to use uh, their chalks, little chalks. By the way, I'm calling here the uh, classroom at UBC, okay? so hopefully there won't be anybody coming in and can work here a little bit. So we're going to use a little chalk and an actual blackboard in a classroom to do this, uh, these videos. So let's say we have something like this. Okay? Uh, five over three over. Let's say we had this, this equation and they asked us to solve this, this equation. Okay? Before, this is a general rule that you should always try to do this. Okay? Before you start crunching numbers, moving numbers around, and trying to solve an equation, you should take a look at the equation and list your restrictions. Okay. The reason you want to do this is because at a certain point, when you're crunching, you know, when you're trying to solve this equation, you might start losing some of the solutions. Okay. So you have to keep note of your restrictions. As we stated in mathematics, our restriction, one of our restrictions that we're going to have is we cannot divide by zero because the equation explodes, right? So what we do with this equation, whenever we get an equation, if there's a fraction involved, all we do, we grab the denominator, right? And we say we can't divide, we can't divide by zero. zero. So what we do is, we solve for this not equaling zero, and that will be our restriction. Okay. So what we do, we take the denominator and we say 3x cannot equal zero. Because if 3x is equal to zero, that means the denominator is equal to zero, and we're dividing by zero, and we cannot divide by zero. Okay. So if you divide, you divide by three, you divide by three, three equals three, so x cannot equal zero. Okay, and this is our restriction when we're solving for this equation. Now, this side also has an equal sign. And if this side, uh, this side also has a fraction, so you also have to take a look at this side and say, what's the restriction here? Now, the, restri the restriction here is exactly the same as the restriction here, because if you go 6x cannot equal 0, you divide by 6, so x cannot equal 0. So you get the same restriction for this side of the equation. So before we start crunching this equation, before we start solving this equation, we always try to list our restrictions. 
And what I personally do, and I think this is the general standard of the way things are done, is I always list my restrictions on the side. And what happens when you get more complicated equations, this is, going to, this is a straightforward equation, and there's only one restriction to this. When you get large equations, restrictions might pop up halfway through your solution. Okay? So what I end up doing is listing my restrictions on the side, on the right side of you know, the piece of paper where I'm doing the work. And at the end, I look up the right side, and for my solution, I always list the restrictions. I just add them all up at the bottom. Okay? Not add them all up, but list them all at the bottom. So over here, I would say our restriction is x cannot be equal to 0. As we stated, our restriction is, you know, comes up with the number 0, right? We cannot divide by 0. So before you would go ahead and start solving this equation, what you need to do is take the denominators from both sides, and if you had another term here, let's say you have, you have 2 over x here, right? You have to take the denominators in every single term and say they cannot equal 0. So for example, for this one, it would be, here, let's do this in blue. For over here, you would go, 5x minus 1 cannot equal 0. So 5x cannot equal 1. You just grab the 1, bring it over, right? Divide by 5, divide by 5. So x cannot equal 1 over 5. Okay? That's one restriction. That's for this term only. You have to deal with this one. Okay? For this one, you take each term and you say it cannot equal 0. You said the whole thing cannot equal to 0. So you're going to go x plus 1 times 2x minus 3 cannot equal 0. You got two things multiplied together to give you 0. That means each one you solve for not equaling 0. So x plus 1 cannot equal 0. 2x minus 3 cannot equal 0. Grab the 1, bring it over. So x cannot equal negative 1. And 2x minus 3 cannot equal oops, very good. So 2x two, two cannot equal 3, divide by 2, so x cannot equal 3 over 2. So those are three restrictions so far we have for this equation. And we also have over here. Well, over here, it's just straightforward. x cannot equal 0. Okay. So before you even start looking at solving this equation, what you would do is write down all the restrictions on the right hand side here. Okay. And all your restrictions are x cannot equal 0, x cannot equal 3 over 2, x cannot equal negative 1, and x cannot equal 1 over 5. Okay. And I'm just going to jump ahead a little bit. For anyone who's gone far enough, these are going to be our vertical asymptotes if we're graphing the function. right? So these are, are unknowns because if we set x equal to any single one of these in the above equation, we're going to have to divide by 0 and we don't know how to divide by 0.